All right, hello everybody. Good morning. Thank you for coming. Nice to see some of you again. Uh, so we're very excited. This is our 29th. Eight. 20, no, no 29th. 29. Right. Next 20, year's 30. 20, that's right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, going to London yes. in the fall. So that's crazy. It's yeah. a long time. Yeah. So we're very excited to do this again with you. I won't go, unfortunately, uh, but you will. And today we'll hear from Eileen. Is she? Your art instructor is here. Here she is. Um, and I think Galen's coming. Uh, and we'll hear from Paula, and she'll run you through everything you need to know. And for questions, we'll hang on until the very yeah, end. Yeah, I said that was going to, well, sort of. Yeah, I have a slide to organize that, so okay. it doesn't happen like it did with Japan. So, yeah, hold your yeah. questions until the end, because yeah. it gets complicated yeah, yeah. when there's a bunch of questions. Awesome. All right, yeah. so I'll leave it to you. All right, thank you. Good morning. Uh, I may have met some of you. I've visited some of your campuses. I've been here at Citrus a lot. My name is Paula Messina, and I work with AFS Study Abroad. I've um, actually been working with AFS Study Abroad for 27 years, so I nearly have that much experience. Before that, I was an AFS student. When I was a junior in college, I went with AFS to Spain, and it uh, was an experience that completely changed my life. It changed everything from my personality to what I wanted to do with my life. Uh, it was the best experience I'd ever had. I ended up moving back to Spain and uh, began to work for AIFS after college. And I uh, spent 25 years working, or well, 25 years total between student and working for AIFS there. And then I've been back here in Cal Southern California for the past few years, continue to working with AIFS as University Relations Coordinator for faculty-led programs. So um, I think you guys have made the right decision. I know you've made the right decision. This is going to be the experience of a lifetime. Uh, good for you. Your program starts on September 7th. That's the day I believe that you arrive in London until December First, which is the day that you return back to LA. And uh, just to give you details of what we are going to discuss in the presentation. So this hopefully will help answer all of your questions, right? The, well, we did our Japan presentation a few months ago. Um, people were uh, jumping the gun and asking questions maybe about communications and money when I was still on the program itinerary. So if the easiest thing would be to ask questions about the slide. That would be wonderful. Um, and then we'll, it will help the meeting go a lot smoother and be a lot uh, more logical and easier to follow along. So these are all the things that we're going to cover. For example, when we start, we're going to go over the student portal, important documents that you can find there that we want you to start looking at and reading. We still have a month to go before departure. Then we'll go through you know, what departure day will be like, what arrivals will be like. We'll also go over your accommodations, your transportation pass as well as your British Life and Culture course, some optional components of the cultural program that you have if you wish to participate. Well, I'll introduce you to your AFS staff in London who wishes they could be here, but they still have students on summer programs in London. Uh, we have uh, some cultural differences, some packing tips to help you get ready. I know you probably have all of your stuff all over your room thinking, what am I gonna put in this little suitcase? Um, we will give you some information, practical information on like electric and voltage and you know your electronics, um, some information on weather, on money, communications, mail, insurance, and then we'll go over the lovely health and safety, which is nobody's favorite, but it's an important uh, issue to talk about start thinking about and student conduct. So that is our plan for the day. It sounds really long, but I hope to make it entertaining and like I said, participative, if you could just make sure that we are stay on topic, right? All right, awesome, thank you. So have you all logged into your AFS portal? According to Patty and Karen in our Stanford office, all of you but one have. <laughs> um, so uh, you know what this looks like, you know what your login is, you know what your password is, and you've opened up your portal and started to look at what's in it. And also done some of the tasks in it. Uh, like you, what your tasks were to upload your passport, to upload a photo, right? So make sure you get your tasks done uh, as soon as possible. I want to point you out the I wanted to point out the program documents. This is a super important part of your portal. Have you all looked at the look at all of those program documents that are up there? Look at all that information. Not everybody does. I bet your parents have had questions and you've been, I don't know. 
I'm not really sure. Well, all of these program documents probably have the answers to all of your questions. Uh, starting on Monday, we're going to upload this PowerPoint to the uh, list here. But in the meantime, you have a lot of different documents. And one that I do want to point out is, I don't know how easy it is for you to see from back there, but this uh, fourth from the bottom is your pre-departure handbook. This is the front page of your pre-departure handbook. This document is about, uh, here's Galen, is about uh, 40 pages long, and it's got all of the information written down about your program in there and can help you really prepare and feel prepared for this whole experience, all right? Also in there is... Um, the timetable of classes, you have the syllabus for the British Life and Culture course, which is the one course that you all have to take. In there is the optional cultural program, so we have dates of activities and excursions in there, as well as information on both accommodations. So you'll have information on your home stays in there, two actual um, documents, as well as information on Courtville Gardens, which are your student apartments. So please look at the document section of your portal because it is packed full of information that you need to know. Okay? Uh, and then we're going to start with departures. So your departure is Thursday the 6th. Uh, you'll be departing LAX, Virgin Airlines, Terminal, I believe it's B now, right? Terminal B. It used to be for it's Tom Bradley. Now I believe it's called B. They renamed it just to keep it interesting at LAX because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we have to do that. Uh, your, the flight departs that Thursday at 3.35 p.m. So what time should you be at the airport? 12.30. Three hours before, you should plan to be at the airport and start your check-in, okay? Uh, the TSA always recommends three hours. Two hours is cutting it close. Remember, your actual, technically your flight starts to board an hour before departure, <coughs> right? You have to go through security, and that is always a nice li long line that weaves in and out and uh, take off all of your, you know, your shoes and all that good stuff, unpack your laptop. So that takes a while. Your jewelry, all that stuff. Make sure nothing's in your pocket. So it does take a while. So 1230. And, um, you know, I'm new sort of to the L.A. area. And so with traffic and everything, you have to leave even earlier than that. As a matter of fact, knowing traffic, maybe you should leave now. <laughs> right after this meeting. <laughs> um, you will arrive in London the next day, so all European flights are overnight flights. You'll arrive on Friday the 7th at 10.05 a.m. local time, London time, right? For those of you that know, this is, again, the group flight. I have 33 out of the 47 of you on the group flight. There are 14 of you that have booked your own flights. We have lots of seats, so you can come in and we can have people kind of scoot over and move together. So we have the families that like to sit together can sit together. Would you guys move in one? Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, we have two here. All right, so 33 of you are on the group flight, right, flying with Virgin Atlantic, and you'll be met by AI Fest staff there at London Heathrow. Uh, as soon as you go through customs, pick up your luggage from the carousel, then go through, sorry, go through immigration, Pick up your luggage from the luggage carousel and then go through customs. That's where uh, our staff is allowed to wait for our student groups. And they'll have a nice big sign that says uh, Citrus College or Southern California uh, Foothills Consortium and AIFS. And they will be there to meet you. It'll be easy to find right there in the front. Okay? You can always look for the AFS logo. Once you arrive, um, you first clear immigration, like I said, then you collect your luggage from the luggage carousel. One thing to keep in mind is that sometimes luggage is lost. Nowadays with, you know, technology, it doesn't happen as much as it used to when I was a student in the 80s and I would travel. Uh, when I started to work with AIFS in uh, the early 90s, we would often have a couple people per group with lost luggage doesn't happen much anymore, but if it were to happen, you have to know what to do. Uh, there will be a customer service desk if, that says lost luggage right there next to the uh, carousels. 
you want to go and report your piece missing, they'll, it's really quick to fill out a form with an agent. Uh, you'll describe the luggage and they will probably locate it right away online. Um, then the luggage gets delivered to your accommodation, so that's easy. If that were to happen, you want to give the Dilk House address. That's in the handbook that I pointed out in the front. It's also on two slides in this uh, presentation. So you'll give our main office, which we call the Dilk House, uh, they'll give their address and the duty cell phone, which is also in this presentation, and then our staff will help locate it and get it to you in London. Uh, you can list those on your luggage tag. Next week, um, Patty from our Stanford office will be sending the group students a copy of the e-ticket uh, your, and your itinerary by UPS, as well as some luggage tags and your immigration letter. Students who are not on the group flight, you'll just be sent some luggage tags and a copy of your immigration letter. You'll be getting them probably by the end of next week, beginning of the following, by UPS. All right, so that will all be coming to your house in the States. Um, like we said here at the beginning, usually it takes about 24, maybe 48 hours to deliver lost luggage to your homes. It is really important to travel as if your luggage were going to be lost. Whenever I travel, I always travel that way. And that means I always pack a complete change of clothing in my carry-on. So I always pack something to sleep in and something to wear on the first day orientation in my carry-on. And so it's just peace of mind. And if my luggage were to be lost, I'd have something to sleep in and something to wear the next day. Because there's nothing worse and having to sleep in your clothes and get up in your clothes the next day and wear them around on your first day orientation. It's yucky. So definitely have a nice complete change of clothing in your carry-on. Right. Yes. Any comments? I'm happy to have. Toothbrush. Toothbrush, right? Anything valuable in your luggage. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so for those, again, on the group flight, you'll be met by AIFS staff. Uh, they'll meet you in the arrivals hall, and then you will travel from, by bus, what they call coach, from um, the airport to your accommodations or to Delk House. The students who are staying in the student apartments will go right to the um, student apartment building. And students who are staying in homestays travel to the AFS office, where your homestay family will come and pick you up. Okay, so that is just a little bit of logistics so you know what to expect. So 13 of you, I believe, have booked your own flights, which is fine. Uh, it's really important that you send us your complete itinerary. And you do that, uh, you may have uploaded it to the portal. I, I know in some programs we have the ability to upload your itinerary to the portal. Uh, the, a good thing to do would be to make sure that you email it to our staff in London. Here's our staff. Uh, email address, studentinfo at aifsuk.co.uk, sorry. So that is our um, email there. Put, yes. It's not .uk? That's not right. That's, it's not, is no, it? It's AI, isn't it AIFS That's the first time I've seen that, and then I was scared to. Yeah. I think that's wrong. Right? So it might be just aifs.co.uk, unless they changed it. I'm afraid they changed it. Ooh. Click on it. <laughs> I don't know if he's got Outlook. Let me see. Well, Usually it's afs.co.uk. No, it's, it's studentinfo at afs.co.uk. Okay, so take out that UK. Yes. In the, sorry. I thought maybe they changed it because I didn't notice it. That's an error. Yeah. Okay. Um, do, you, do you want to fix it, John? Oh. Uh, let's can you? It okay. Later. Can you guys note that error, please? It's in the handbook as well. Yeah. Um, make sure you put SoCal in the, um, in the uh, title page. Yeah, it helps us um, organize. And then AIFS will respond, our staff will respond by sending you instructions on what you do when you arrive at the airport, how to get where you need to go. Yes, sir. Um, for those who book their own travel, uh, do they have to make their own arrangements to the apartment? Yes, they do. Okay. Right. So you have to make your own arrangements from the airport to central London. Uh, what you want to do is wait for our staff to give you, you know, instructions on where to go, right? Because depending on which accommodations you've 
you've you've chosen, um, especially with the homestays. It may be that you are told to transfer directly to the homestay. It may be that you come to the AFS office to uh, and have your family meet you there. So it's important that you communicate directly with our staff to um, have clear what your instructions are, right? They're very personalized. So we need you all okay. to communicate with them, right? There's, thank you, John. There's the correct address. I thought that was weird, but. Uh, Okay, any questions about arrivals? Yes. So you said that we have to get our own transportation to yes. those places. Yes. When do they communicate that with us? Uh, as soon as you email them, they should answer in a day or two. Because they just said thank you when I emailed them. The itinerary? <laughs> you know what? If, if they, they, it'll probably be this week then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't heard anything by the end of this week, then re email them. Okay, but generally they, they should be, it's probably because it was early, so they'll be emailing everybody back. Okay, so you'll be getting your homestay information and the information on roommates, as well as giving you, again, the apartment information and your roommate information for students in the apartment. Yes, sir. Are there any visa requirements you like to apply? You don't have visa requirements. If you are a U.S. student citizen with a U.S. passport, you don't because your program is under 90 days. Uh, we will be giving you the immigration letter in that UPS package that we're sending this week. Sorry, it was my ear. And um, you'll present that immigration letter when you um, go into London, and that's all you need to do. All right, you, there's no separate visa that you need to apply for. Any other questions? Yes. If I am staying to travel afterward, would I have to get a visa? Uh, what you want to do is, you can't, that doesn't make you eligible for a visa technically. Your program would have to be longer than 90 days for you to be eligible for a visa. What you want to do is probably leave the UK. But the UK also has um, 160 days, so it's not 90 days. It's so not 90 days? No, 90 days. Oh, I'm sorry. Days, but uh, the UK has 160 days. 160 or 80. 180. Right. So, so it's six months. So you have plenty of time to travel around. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Any other questions? So as far as immigration, we sort of covered that. You'll be re receiving an immigration letter from our Stanford office in a UPS mailer this week. It is really important that you keep that letter safe, right? That you travel with that letter, uh, with the documents that you travel with um, in your bag when you go and keep it in clearly with your passport. Uh, you'll have to present it to the immigration officer when you arrive in Britain. If you don't, then you won't be given the right stamp in your passport, right? You need a student stamp, so it's really important that you uh, present the letter. Be patient, prepare for lines. I mean, lines are gonna start when you check in, right? Right on check-in, you're gonna start with lines. Going through security, there's gonna be lines. Waiting to board plane, there'll be lines, and then when you get to immigration as well, they go uh, slowly. If you all have U.S. passports, as far as we know, I haven't been yes, told, we right? Have so we've had nobody, yeah. and you all have passports, right, that you've uploaded to the student portal. Okay, good. Uh, you will enter, sorry, that's right, six month entry stamp. I'm sorry about that. So you do have six months. Sorry. Uh, you'll enter as a short-term student visitor. And this is what the right and wrong stamps look like. <laughs> so this one with the green smiley face is what we want. The simple tourist one, we do not want, right? So that's why it's so important to present the letter. If you don't present the letter, you won't be given the right visa stamp in your passport, all right? Uh, we have to see all of your, pa yes? Or? When you're entering, as soon as you get off the plane, yeah. you will enter, you'll get into the immigration line in, um, in the UK, and that's where you'll wait to see an immigration officer, and that's where you present the letter, right? When you present your passport, you present your letter simultaneously. Yes? Um, if I don't have a US passport, does it convert? Uh, it depends on the country. Yeah. I don't know the relationship the UK has with Mexico, but you might need a visa. Yeah. 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 Maybe we could talk about it after the meeting. Yeah. 
Um, so you make sure that you keep your letter uh, safe before you go to London during your trip. And then after you're in London, you're going to need to keep it for the duration of the program. So it's really important that you keep it safe. AFS will ask to see all of your passports on the first day in campus. So during the orientation meeting, you'll have to bring your passports with you. Our staff will then uh, collect passports and they'll make copies. It's Our office is uh, uh, obligated by UK government to keep copies of your visas and your passports on file there. Um, and uh, when, I think that's it, yeah. That's it. So they'll do that. It's also good to keep it safe, yes. During this stay, will they have to carry their passport or their ID? Or yeah, or generally when they're in London, we don't want them carrying their original passports on them. They'll just carry a photocopy. So it's always good to have a few photocopies made before you go. When you get to London and you have your stamps, it's a great idea to make a photocopy of your stamp once you're in London and you can carry that photocopy on you. Take a copy. Yeah, you could take a copy on your, uh, a photo on your phone, but it's, it's something that I would like put in, my, in a cloud or in your email so that you always have a copy in case your phone falls, dies, falls in the, the toilet, as they say, or it's stolen or lost, you know. And, and it is a good thing to have an actual physical copy on you because if something were to happen, it is something that the police would probably ask to see. And it is so much easier if you actually present a photocopy of it. Sure. Any other questions? No? Okay. All right, so we have a basic itinerary for the, for the highlights of the program. Uh, your arrival is September 7th. On the 8th, we'll begin our orientation with your AFS staff, followed by a sightseeing tour of London. On the 9th, we'll have our first welcome uh, culture activity event. We'll have a boat cruise along the Thames River. Uh, the 11th through the 14th is the optional Scotland weekend, which you may have signed up for. If you're still interested, there is still some room. So if you're interested in signing up for the Scotland uh, weekend, it's very popular. We'll have an additional optional weekend to Florence, Italy on the, from the 8th to the 11th of November. So students who like to travel with us, you'll have another opportunity to do that if you wish. And then uh, we don't want to think about this now, but your program uh, ends on December 1st and you have a same day return. Yeah, the moms are like, yay, <laughs> I get that. <laughs> I know. Uh, the... Uh, Return is the eighth. I didn't mention that. I actually have full circle in study abroad. I sent my son on a citrus program in January, so I'm also a study abroad mother. And even though he was with AIFS, uh, with a company I work for, with staff that I actually trained, I still couldn't breathe for a whole month. I know. So I get it. I really do. Uh, there we go. So I'm going to give you a little bit of insight into your heart. Yes. Question. Is Stonehenge excursion still taking place? Yes, it is. A, uh, the date for that, that's part of the um, optional cultural package. Uh, and the date for that is in the program documents. There's actually a calendar there for you. We like to give you the dates so that if you have independent travel that you want to plan, you, you'll have those dates. It's not actually a slide, but uh, it's in the program document list. Sure. Any other questions? No? Okay, great. So students who have chosen homestay, and I have the numbers here, 19 of you have chosen homestays, uh, 27 of you have chosen apartments, so there's 46 of you total. Uh, your homestays are with families in mostly the northern section of London. There are two great homestay information sheets in that document library. So definitely go there and look through them. You'll get information about the areas where they're located, uh, information about transportation available there, buses, uh, tube stops, all of that good stuff. So they're really thorough um, booklets in there. Uh, our staff will also be going over that during our orientation and helping students with transportation. But you'll have twin rooms, so we'll have two students per homestay. They are, uh, we do have several homes in the same neighborhoods and areas, so it's a nice thing because students can commute and uh, come home together, travel to class together, to activities, and um, on free time. 
The it's usually located in the northern section of the city. There are uh, several neighborhoods, and we do name them in those documents. Um, you'll have shared bathrooms and living space with the homestay families. Access to the kitchen to prepare meals, to prepare your lunch, so you can help save a little money, take some sandwiches with you, uh, PB and J, make your own breakfast, that kind of thing. Space to store groceries. Uh, breakfast is provided by the homestay Monday through uh, Friday, so that's a nice thing, way to help save on a little money and uh, limited laundry facilities. So you do remember that washers in Europe tend to be much smaller than clothes washers here in the US. They tend to be about six kilos, which is about 12 pounds. Uh, you can fit probably about five pairs of jeans in, in a 12 pound <laughs> washer. So uh, you will have to learn how to manage your laundry. It's not quite as easy as it is in the States. So you do have to learn the ins and outs. In your home state family, the great thing is that they will, they're there to help you through that. Um, bedding is provided, towels are not. So you don't have to worry about sheets, blankets, or any of that, but you do need to bring your towels, okay? I always suggest bringing two towels because one for when one is dirty <laughs> and washing, you, have, you can take a shower, <laughs> okay? Some more information about the homestays. Um, the host details and your roommates will be sent to you about 10 days prior. Yeah. Uh, how far would a, like, a typical homestay house be from the school? 30 to 40 minute commute. Okay. Yeah, 30 to 40 minute commute. Right, generally they're either uh, bus to tube and then tube into central London or tube directly into central London, yes. How far are the apartments? From the, the apartments are closer. They're in Kensington, that's about a 15 minute tube ride. Okay, uh, you can look up the homes on Google Maps because you'll be getting the addresses. It's And you'll have their email or Facebook and it is, we definitely encourage you to make contact with your homestay family before you go, right? Write them to say hi. Um, a nice thing to bring would be a small gift, uh, something small for the home. It doesn't have to be fancy or anything. I sent my son to Costa Rica with a small tablecloth, uh, you know, pretty tablecloth from Target or table runner, you know, something for the home is nice. A book about Southern California, well, we've been doing this program for 29 years, and we've sent students to, we use the same families over and over again, so I bet they have every book on Southern California <laughs> that has been written. <laughs> so I don't generally recommend those, but um, something, maybe maybe something a candle. From, uh, Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's stuff. That's good. Yeah, there's lots of nice things that, ask your mom, what what your mom would like as a gift would be a nice gift, yes. Um, so are we all going to, everybody who's staying in the home are we each going to have just one roommate, we're going to share a room with one person? Exactly, another person from the program. Okay, and you said there's 19 of us, so one person will not be? <laughs> we might, <laughs> right, we might have a, a three-person home, so there'll be a single and a double. <laughs> Okay. Uh, you guidelines as far as guidelines. I mean, our staff again will go over the do's and don'ts for homestays with you when you're there. Use your common sense, right? Uh, act as you know. It is your home. It is a place that you're going to live for an extended period of time. You want them to become sort of like your family, right? But so you want to treat them. I would say a little bit better than you treat your family. <laughs> All right. You want to be a little nicer to them than you are, and I know because I have, you know, two sons your age, um, especially my little one. God bless him. Um, <laughs> be a little nicer. He's nice to everybody else, um, but you know, be a little nicer to them. You know, are you interested? You know, you've chosen a homestay, so that means you're probably really want to live like a Brit and learn about British life and culture firsthand. So you have to get in there and really, you know, act like you're interested. And so the more that you do that, then, you know, fake it till you make it kind of thing, it really works. You know, the more that you act like you're interested, then the more relationship will start to grow and develop and uh, the better you'll feel and the better, you know, that they will like you. So definitely um, 
treat them nicely and be inquiring and uh, want to learn about their lives. Uh, respectful, communicative, ask if you're not sure, right? If that's the golden rule. And uh, communication, that's how relationships are built. Relationships don't happen automatically. They have to be built. So it's half for you, okay? Awesome. You're going to love it. Our students, I feel, because I've been, you know, doing study abroad, and most of my work is in Spain and Latin America directly with students on programs, and I really feel that the homestay students gen generally tend to uh, really integrate themselves more than students out in who choose the apartments. But the apartment life, I mean, it's a great thing. A lot of you still live at home. You still live with your parents, and you're ready to do the more independent thing, and so you've chosen the student apartment, which is great. The student apartment building, there's a photo of it, the Courtfield Gardens. It's in Kensington, which is just about a 15, maybe 20 minute, depending on traffic, uh, tube ride from Bloomsbury, which is where the University of London building and our offices are. And uh, you can see the kitchens there on the right. You can see you have a very basic kitchenette. There you have an electric burner on the right, your microwave. And uh, it's a very much a uh, kitchenette kind of thing, right? So uh, what we don't want you to do is expect a lot of space because there won't be a lot of space. And then you have a very strange bird's eye view of the rest of the bathroom. So you can see that it looks rather small. I guess that was the only way they could fit it all in. <laughs> So uh, you can see that it is a very small bathroom, but you can get done what you need to get done in there. And then uh, let your, your roommate choose it, right? So they're shared restrooms. Um, some of them are, it's an old building in Kensington, which is uh, where the royals live, right? William and Kate and Meghan and Harry. You might run into them in Kensington Gardens on your walk or your run. Uh, so it's an older building, so the, the flats are all different, right? It is, they're not all uniform and exactly the same. We have some that are one bedroom, some that are mezzanine, studio flats. They, so studio means that your kitchen and bed are in the same room, right? Uh, so we have, they a mix of different options. Jen, did you visit that one? No, this, this is a new one. This is a new one. They're, they're very, very nice. Really, really nice. Students have really liked them. Um, you will have twins and triple rooms. Your roommates will be sent to you about 10 days prior to arrival, which is also when your arrival instructions will be sent. Uh, you are in the Kensington area, like I said, and uh, linen and utensils are supplied, not towels. So you need to bring two towels or purchase them when you're there, which is another option. Uh, bring your toiletries, right? So no soaps, no shampoos provided, no toilet paper provided. So that is something that you'll have to purchase when you get there. There are supermarkets really close in the area. Cleaning products as well. So you'll be um, responsible for doing your own cleaning up. Can okay. I say, can I say something? Yeah. To, uh, with, with roommates, you know, I really want you guys to get to know each other before you leave and try to connect with someone and find a roommate. And that's really important because I, I give these student evals, yeah. evaluations. I just got them back from our students in Japan. And you're in a small space with someone, right? So if you're, if you're not compatible, you're going to have a problem. And then moving people is not easy, easy. for AIFS. Yeah. They have limited space and it's, right. it's stressful when they have to move people, right. you know, because people aren't getting along. So I tried to set you up to get together, and we had like 20 or so of you get together, but please really get in touch with each other. Um, try to find someone to be your roommate. Um, maybe get on the Facebook and plan another meetup for those of you who didn't go to the last one. And uh, if you can't do that, just be really descriptive. In what you're looking yeah. for. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's it's important. impossible for us to know from a sheet of paper who's compatible and who's right. not. I know because I've been trying to do it for twenty seven years. Yeah. You you absolutely can request roommates. Yes. We love it when you request roommates, which is yes, what John's please. trying to tell you. If you get to know each other and then you request roommates. Our one rule is that you must send separate emails requesting one another. Right. Right? That makes sense? No stalking, right? Um <laughs> And then I, I think that for roommates and things like, 
you know, a lot of you, again, have not lived away from home. You probably have your own rooms. You have to learn how to get along with people. That's part of this experience. And you have to learn how to live with other people. That's part of this yeah. experience. So that means you do have to be on your best behavior when you live, even in a student apartment with your roommate. You have to be considerate of one another, which means everything from doing your own dishes and cleaning up after yourself, to um, flushing after you're done. So be considerate of one another. Yes. Not bringing people home, which is not an option anyway. So, right. you know. Not being passive aggressive, that's a big thing. <laughs> you don't know what passive that, aggressive is. So that, yeah. There's better ways to communicate. So, we'll go over that. so learn how to, if you don't know how to communicate. Yeah, you have your sociology faculty yeah. to help you with that. Yeah. Just be as easygoing. Go as slow as you can. Right. That helps. In all the years I've had roommates, you just gotta go, okay, that's the weirdest behavior I've ever seen. Whatever. <laughs> but really, do try to connect with someone. Yeah. Maybe after this meeting, you guys, there's tables outside you can hang out at. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. If you want to do like a, a meeting. Well, we did one already. Uh, oh, you did one already. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, it's up to you. Think people. about it. Uh, transporta transportation, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep going on. Transportation is included in your program fee, which is really nice. You'll get this uh, Oyster card, which is going to be your best friend when you go to London. So this uh, Oyster card for students in the apartments, go get a card that's valid for zones one and two. Students in the homestays get uh, cards for valids one through uh, zones one through three. This will cover all of your commuting to and from class every day, to and from activities that we do in the British Life and Culture class, as well as those of you who are doing the optional culture package. And most of where you want to go in London, I'm going to show you a tube map in a second, and you'll see how far one and then two get. There are actually nine zones, but uh, the zones outside of two tend to be more residential. So uh, they're unlimited use on the underground buses, night buses. So it is, like I said, your best friend. What happens if your wallet's stolen and the pass is in there? What happens if you lose the pass because you swiped it and then you put it down, didn't put it away? then you are, as you guys like to say in text language, S-O-L. So you definitely have to keep your best friend safe the entire duration of the program so that you are not then having to buy another Oyster card, okay? Um, beware of rush hour, and they say that it sounds like rush hour is really scary. Um, it is to us in Los Angeles because we're used to rush hour in cars, right? But if you've been to New York City or maybe Chicago, maybe if you've been downtown LA on the train, you know that at certain hours of the day, everybody's trying to either get to work really, really quickly because they're late, or they're trying to get home as quickly as possible because their commute is forever. So during rush hour, people tend to be uh, moving very quickly. They know exactly where they're going and they tend to be a little more aggressive. So that's just what we want to let you know. Uh, you might get lost at first, that's completely normal. Uh, if you do, be calm and you'll figure it out. It's really good to work with the buddy system or the B3 system in the beginning. I see, I'm gonna get you. Um, in the beginning, that way, it, it is so much easier to kind of put your heads together and figure out where you have to go together. I take a map, don't always follow the crowd because you don't always necessarily need to go where the rest of the crowd is going. You had a question. So when will we receive this? This is in your orientation packet as soon as you get there, right? So the students who are on the group flight, they'll get that as soon as they get on the bus, essentially. And then the students who are transferring on their own will be met by AIFS staff, or that will give them their, their Oyster card. Okay. Yes, sir. What is the cost of one of those Oyster card votes? So For the whole semester, I didn't... I think it's like 300 bucks or something. A month. So I think it's more than that. More. Yeah, I think that's a month. I think it's like a $900 value for the whole semester. <laughs> yeah, they don't want to lose it. Don't lose it, which is why I start to talk about it now. Our staff will be reinforcing them. I think, you know, when you, move, when you lose something, and this happened to me, I know, because is when you're in the middle of transit, and you take it out because you need to use it, and then you don't put it away. That's when you lose it. 
So you have to be, because you're, it's, it's rush hour and there's a million people and the train is coming and you're ready to get on the train, right? And that's when you just stick it in a pocket or you put it down. Like you sit down and you put it down next to you and it's gone. So you want to be very conscious of that. And so I like to talk about worst case scenarios because maybe it'll be. I have a question up here. No? Question? Yeah. As far as the home state, is there going to be a Wi Fi also? There are Wi Fi in both accommodations. Sorry, I didn't mention that. Yes. Yes. In the school, in the student offices, as well in all their accommodations, they all have Wi Fi. Yes. Like, if you lose it, uh, I know they have to pay on their way back or whatever, but is it replaceable or is it not replaceable? It's at not replaceable at all. So they have to buy a brand new one. It's like cash, basically. It's like cash. It's cash. Yes, ma'am? I didn't hear. Did you have another question? No? OK. All right. Uh, here is the tube map. So you can see this uh, white section in the, the middle is all zone 1. And there you have, it's hard for me to see without my glasses, there you have all of the real big must-sees and places and things to do and visit in London, everything from uh, Kensington to uh, on the other side, the South Side, South Bank, um, Great Portland Street, King's Cross. So those are all where you're going to spend the most of your time. Right here in the center are the stops for our schools. So our school is right about here. Can you see that right there? So Good Street and Russell Square are the two um, stops for your classroom building and for the AFS office right there. It's right by the British Museum, which is really famous for the Egyptian collection there. I'm sorry, did I? Any questions on transportation of the tube? You excited? Isn't that exciting? I love to look at maps. So cool. I do. I could look at even tube maps. So your British life and culture is a big part of your program. This is the one required course for all students. Uh, it, it are weekly lectures with local faculty. And then you'll have related field trips, which we're going to go over on the next slide quickly. They're organized by a AIFS, but they're graded by your SoCal, by your faculty here. And uh, Professor White will be your uh, professor in charge of that. So she will be. The one. So you, as part of your life and culture class, you'll be visiting the British Library, the National Portrait Gallery, Shakespeare's Globe Theater. You get a behind-the-scenes tour. Really cool. You'll be visiting the Houses of Parliament and the Imperial War Museum, which is just outside of London. That's a nice day in the countryside, the afternoon. Uh, students who have signed up for the cultural package, you'll be doing these 13 different activities. And there is a calendar for this in the documents um, section of your AIFS portal, so you can start and plan all of your um, independent travel around those days. And QPR football, I had to ask my son what that is. That's Queen Park Rangers which is Premier League, no, they're not Premier League? They drop down? Yes. Are you able to buy a cultural package if you have it? You can. You can. Uh, if you'd like to, uh, we will have limited space once the program starts. But if you'd like to sign up for the cultural package, you can do that now. And you just do that through the portal. All right, go into the portal, and uh, you can um, add that on to your if not, you can always email Patty or Karen in Stanford, and they will help you do that. But it is nice because you do get those five-day trips and theater and um, see Wicked, the Mousetrap, pretty cool. Winter's Tale. OK. Uh, two more optionals that you can do if you want to. You may have signed up for them again are the optional Scotland weekend. Those are the, thir the 11th through the 14th of October. Those, that uh, includes all of those uh, things there, including transportation, um, your um, housing when you're there. You get a hostel. They do the uh, Highlands tour, which students say is fantastic. Um, students love this tour. And then another one that we're doing is the Florence Weekend. Uh, that's the 8th through the 11th of November. You would book your own flights, but uh, the accommodation, city tours, cooking class, and transfers are um, 
included. What we do is we pick a flight on, I think, EasyJet or Ryanair, and you guys book the flight that we tell you, and then we do all of the airport transfers for you. Yeah, any questions? Do you have any kind of estimate on flight cost? Like just ballpark? Uh, $70. Yeah, flights are cheap. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know the price of this package. It was three hundred eighty-five. Three eighty-five. Thank you. Yeah, because it just, I mean, it said book your own flights, but it just, I just. Kind of they to once you, they tell you what flight to book. Oh, okay. It's nice because you get guided tours and museum entrances yeah. and all that stuff to that. So that's that's the good thing about traveling with us. For that one, how do they sign up? For that they can one? sign up online too through the portal. Okay. You can always email our staff in London. <laughs> <laughs> Any qu I heard somebody starting a question. Yes. So if you didn't sign up in Scotland to the Florence, can you do that? Before you can do that by e I. She just said she says, and she's probably right to email our staff in London at that student info email. You can still. What we do, exactly, exactly. What we do, it's also in the handbook. What we do is, it's like a first come, first serve basis. So once it's full, it's full. So right now, there's still space. The We will have a few other groups. We have another consortium in London at the same time that you are. So these trips we plan for both groups. So it's not just for you guys, so there might be spaces that they occupy. So if you're interested in doing it, I, I'd say do it as soon as possible to guarantee that you have space. Okay. Um, as far as where we are in London, this is our uh, little mini map of the Bloomsbury section of London. i got to put this on so I can see this. Uh, this is... Delk House, what we call Delk House. This is our offices on the basement floor of the um, building. And then the top floor has our faculty offices. And then upstairs are AFS administration offices as well. Just across the street from Mallet Street, which is a tiny little tree-lined street in London, um, you have the University of London Student Union. And that is where you'll have your classrooms as well as uh, the clubs are there that you can join if you'd like to because you'll have a membership to the student union included so you can join there's a lot of activities that you can join with other students from Britain and from around the world they have a big university a uh, big international population there as well uh, this is the address for Dilk House Dilk which is the one that you want to put on your luggage tags again it's in the student handbook as well and then right down the street, like I said, is the British Museum, the back door of the British Museum. So that's a place that you're going to want to visit. The great thing about London is that all the museums are free. So you can go as many times as you want. So definitely something you want to miss. So this is our uh, study space. This is one of our student rooms in the London office. Our offices are open Monday through Thursday from 8 to 6.30 p.m. And then on Fridays, we close at 5.00. <clears throat> excuse my voice, uh, 12 PCs, so you can print there for free if needed. You have Wi-Fi there, magazines there, and the best thing there is our staff. So there are the lovely ladies who you're going to get to know very well, and we'll get to know you very well, headed up by Julie. And then Sinead is basically our faculty liaison. Uh, Meg and then your uh, Catherine, Charlie, and Issy, which are our student advisors. The last three will be going with you on your activities and things like that. Yes? Um, going back to the previous uh, slide, uh -huh. you said that there is a free Wi-Fi. Yes. Um, now, if the students want to take their laptop, are they allowed or are they able to do their homework, or can they take their Absol laptop to work on their project? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's generally what they all do. You know, for a whole semester, they're generally using their laptop, bringing, commuting with it every day. Yeah. Okay, especially for your courses, I'm sure your faculty has recommendations on that, and they want you to bring that. As far as the student services that we provide, uh, we're here to help. You know, we are the ones that ha are, have set up this program. They're the ones that run this program and they their job is to get you through this program in as safe and as fun 
a manner as possible, dedicated and friendly. They're there to give you travel advice, advice about what to do in London, things to see, what not to do. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> they can take messages. Your mail would be delivered there. So that address for Dilk House right here is also your mailing address. If your parents were to send you anything snail mail, that would be where it would go to. That's where you'd have to pick it up. All right, uh, doctor's appointments. So if you don't feel well, you need to see a doctor, you would contact them. They would help make the appointment for you. And then uh, just to adjusting to life in London, okay? They're, they're really friendly and really sweet, so you'll really get to know them really well. As far as cultural differences, right? We all speak English, so there's not going to be any problem. No adjustment necessary. Well, that's not necessarily the case, right? Always leaving home. Leaving California, I mean, sometimes when I travel to the East Coast, I feel like I have culture shock, right? Uh, so it, there, it will definitely be adjustments that you'll have to make, things to get used to that, you know, you are shocked by. Things like the language. Um, everybody know what a lift is? Yeah, a lift is an elevator. You know what uh, trainers are? Tennis shoes. Tennis shoes, sneakers. You know what uh, pavement is? The sidewalk, right? I know that from Adele. <laughs> uh, so there's lots of different language differences that you'll have to adjust to. Uh, sometimes when I go visit their office and we have staff meetings, uh, my brain has to work overtime to follow along when, when they speak. So that's something that you'll have to get used to. Uh, personal space as well. Remember in Europe, everything is much smaller and much closer, right? We are the land of space. Here we have plenty of space, and that is sort of reflected in uh, it's a value, cultural value of ours that no one comes really too close to us when they're speaking or when they're, right? You always want to, and you're going to talk a lot about that in your sociology courses. People will come very close to you. They'll speak to you very closely, and they, um, public transportation, mass transit, you'll find that people are coming much closer. As a matter of fact, during rush hour, you'll be packed into those sub tube cars like sardines. So you do have to get used to things like that. Um, just like for people, just make sure you know your military time because that is cooling off so much. That helps, exactly. All of Europe years, that's a great tip. All of Europe years is military time. So you'll have to get used to that. Exactly. Uh, as far as uh, pace of life, things are a little slower there than they are here in the U.S. You know, everything here is what's written is law, right? If you see something written down, then it is a contract. There in Europe, things to be a little more flexible, a little more last minute, a little more easygoing. So that's something that you'll probably get used to, especially uh, you know college students. They tend to like that pace of life that's really slow. To get you back and readjusted to the American way will cost a lot. But uh, just know that things are a lot more easygoing and last minute, and you'll have to adjust. As far as size, like we said, your living environment will be a lot smaller probably than what you're used to, closet space, wardrobe space, sorry, it's not a closet, it's a wardrobe, um, will be a lot smaller than what you're used to. Uh, customer service as well, you know, they don't have always the refund or return policies that we do. So before you make a big ticket purchase or purchase something that you're not exactly sure of, make sure that you know and understand if there is a refund policy and if so, what it is, all right? Uh, also, as far as uh, costs of things, remember London is one of the most expensive cities in the world. If you're going out and having pints for lunch and dinner and breakfast, that you are going to be eating through your savings and your money a lot. And, you know, there are ways to cut and save money. Uh, and so you should really watch, you know, you have online banking, know exactly what you're spending. Uh, things are a lot more expensive than they are living at home. And then I think about as far as tipping, you generally don't have to tip. Uh, generally for a meal, tip is included. It's usually about 12.5%. Outside of that, you don't generally tip unless uh, it's a special circumstance. Yes, ma'am. I have a question, and it kind of relates, and I apologize. To no, the, no to worries. The last, um, yeah. When you're talking about the relation to the university. Yes. Um, do the students in the uh, apartments have access to, I thought I saw like a cafeteria. 
experience? Yes, sorry. So that's I didn't get to that. In the university student uh, union, there is a cafe that's very nice there in restaurant. There's a pub there called the library, right? So when your parents call and say, where are you? I'm in the library. You're not lying. Apparently that is the place to be on Friday and Saturday nights, or Thursday and Friday nights. Uh, they'd have to pay. But it is a lot less expensive. In this district, you can see the university there. Uh, there's, it's a university district. There are a lot of places where they can eat for, on a budget, all right? And then they all have access to, you know, store groceries and refrigerators. They could make sandwiches and bring them with them, that kind of thing, okay? Um, as far as packing what to bring, what not to bring, I always get complaints. You didn't tell me I would need. You didn't tell me I wouldn't need. Packing is a very personal thing. Uh, you know, what you are going to wear when you get there may not, you, you, there will always be things that you wish you brought. That always happens. Uh, sometimes parents will send packages. Sometimes it's just cheaper for you to buy something there. You're in London. You can get anything that you need. Uh, but here are some pointers. Definitely bring any prescription medication that you have and you take on a regular basis. Definitely bring enough for the entire duration of the program plus some. It is, you know, going abroad, studying abroad, moving to a new country, a new culture is something that puts stress on your body and your psyche. You don't really even realize it. It's a different kind of stress than, oh my God, I have to work 45 hours this week and I have this project due and I have a test. To set. It's a different kind of stress. It's a stress that is on a much more subconscious <laughs> level. So your body that will feel this stress, you know, it's a nine hour or eight hour, sorry, time difference. And um, it's probably a longer flight than you've ever been on before. And it will take days for you to your body to adjust, for your sleep cycle to regulate. And you do have to be uh, conscious that your body will suffer a little. If you regularly take a prescription medication, you need to make sure that you have enough. All right, because you will be taking it. And you might even take a little bit more, or more often you might need it than you generally do. Definitely a question for you, or a conversation for you to have with your physician, okay? Um, the Definitely bring your towels, clothing that you can layer. Uh, fall is generally the nicest time to be in London. It really is. Beautiful weather, generally. I've been in London at around Halloween time, and it was nicer in London than it was in Southern California. So um, it is a great season to be there. Not quite as much rain as you'd expect, but you still have to be prepared just in case. We all know that our weather is changing and not exactly normal as it was uh, over you know, in the past. Definitely bring comfortable shoes. You're going to be walking all the time. Your Fitbit is going to explode, right? You uh, will be walking like upwards of 10,000 steps a day. That is very common. So I don't know how many miles that is, like a gazillion. Um, <laughs> you definitely, do you know? <laughs> it's five miles. Um, that is like a gazillion to me. Uh, you... Definitely need to have shoes that support you uh, while you're walking that much. I worked with students that, you know, lots of cobblestone, so many steps, very common to get Achilles tendon injuries, heel injuries, that kind of thing, because they are not wearing proper shoes. So that is a big uh, piece of advice that I can give you is get really good trainers, yes. Do you suggest like riding the bike while we're over there? Um, I mean, you, you have to be careful because moving in traffic, it's a completely different traffic system than you're used to. They're, not only are they driving on the other side of the road, but they have completely different rules and processes. So I don't generally recommend that students operate any kind of vehicles, which is <laughs> a bike is a vehicle, right? So generally I don't. Um, I know that you all pay a lot of money to do um, walk on treadmills a lot, and so this is like free, <laughs> right? It's free, so enjoy it. Walk, 
if it's the best, like when you're my age, you'll be like, oh God, I have to walk, so <laughs> go ahead, you could do it. Um, make sure you have an adapter for the UK plug sockets, which is a slide we're gonna get to in a few minutes. What not to bring, don't bother to bring any linens, any pillows, unless you have that pillow that you cannot sleep without, I know. Um, expensive hair dryers or straighteners, those will not work well in uh, with UK voltage and UK plugs. Definitely if you use a straightener or a curling iron or you have a, you know, induction crazy <clears throat> blow dryer, you want, want to buy something there that's cheap and inexpensive and just go au natural. It's, <laughs> it's just easier. Uh, too much stuff, don't bring it because you have to get it all back and it's not worth it. You plus you'll be shopping when you're there, right? Be buying souvenirs and European clothing and... Uh, don't bring clothes that you might wear. Definitely, you know, think about versatile and know that this isn't a fashion show. You're not fashion students, I don't think. It's at least not a fashion program. I do a fashion program with Florence and I can't say that line to them because they are <laughs> fashion. Um, but, you, you know, you're students and students wear the same jeans like five days in a row and the same sweater for the entire semester, and uh, they just change their t-shirt and their underwear. And that's okay, we've all been there. I was there, we have all been there. I know you had a question too. Yes, ma'am. What about going to theater? I mean, what? So bring one nice outfit, one going out outfit, or maybe two going outfits. Don't need a suit, no. Maybe something that's not jeans, a pair of chinos. Um, it is good for the guys to have a shoe, because in a lot of the discotecas and discotheques and clubs and things like that, you can't wear sneakers. So maybe a shoe. Yeah. But I wouldn't say, probably not even a tie, maybe just a button down and they'll be fine. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, just a question. Sure. When you say you have a limited wardrobe space, how many shirts or pants for a guy? I would say bring a week's worth of clothing, week and a half. Week and a half. Okay. Know that you're probably not going to have dryers. It's going to take a couple days for your clothes to. So you can't always run out of clothes because then you can't go to school naked. No dryers. No dryers in Europe. Yes. So you'll have washing machines that generally take a couple hours to run the cycles. They're front loaders and um, will take a couple hours to wash. And then you'll have a drying rack. And the drying rack in the beginning is great because practically overnight in your clothes will dry. But once the weather gets colder and wetter, they will take a little longer to dry. So, so you do definitely need a week and a half worth of clothing and not run out of clothing before you do your laundry. The only question was... And re-wear. Trust me, people in Europe have... Very limited, what we call wardrobes, right? Very limited amount of clothing, but they do tend to wear their clothing more. The other question is about uh, money, as mm -hmm. far as uh, any recommendations. We're, we have a slide on that. We're going to get oh. to that. Any other questions? I'm packing. Um, definitely don't bring heavy or expensive items. Don't bring items, you know, jewelry, <laughs> gold chains, diamond bracelets, diamond rings, leave it all at home. You do not need it. Um, <clears throat> don't bring pepper spray or tasers. That is illegal, all right? So you'll go from being the victim to the aggressor. All right, don't, do not bring them. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I have a question about, like, I typically carry a pocket knife as well as a multi-tool. Yes. I know there's been a lot of stabbings in London lately. And that carrying a knife is going to be more illegal. Is it inadvisable to bring a pocket knife? Well, I we have students travel with pocket knives I mean, all the time. Safe, guys. No, no, no. I <laughs> no. <laughs> I understand what you mean because when you're traveling, and your your you know two out of three of your meals are oranges and cheese and yeah. bread. You need those pocket knives to peel and you know. So I get it. We always traveled with those. Um, you can travel with those okay. utility things. What you can't ever do is bring them into museums and things like that. You, you know, you have to go through. And you can't travel with that on the plane. Well, sure. Right? Obviously, no, obviously, but you forget. Yeah. No, but I've had students not be able to get into museums with them. Not even in their backpacks. 
So you have to be careful in that. But um, generally, if you, we're going to go over safety in a few minutes, but if you follow our safety recommendations, you don't need to be armed. Okay, generally, yeah, no, no, I know. I know, I know. But generally, you don't need that kind of thing. Since we're on there with the pepper spray and that kind of thing, you don't need to be armed. Okay? As far as voltage, um, we say technically you need both an adapter and a converter. An adapter is something that's pictured here. So that changes your US plug to the British plug. And that's what the British plug looks like. So you'll need an adapter, something to adapt your plug. You'll need a converter too because the voltage is different. The voltage is double what it is the US. So um, you need something that will help convert that <coughs> voltage and protect your um, appliance. What happens is that most of your appliances have that already built in, right? So this is why we say technically uh, you need it, but you don't have to actually buy a, just a converter and bring it with you. Uh, your laptops, your phones, your digital cameras, they all have built-in converters, so you don't need that. You'll only need the adapter, which is why we say don't bother bringing blow dryers and curling irons and flat irons because they don't have built-in converters, and those are when you plug them in, they'll blow up, right? Because you have 220 or 230 volts going into your appliance that's only built for 110, and it will literally pop, start to smoke, maybe start to flame. Uh, you don't want to start a fire, right? You don't want to blow fuses. You don't want to start a circuit fire. So you don't want to have those appliances with you. So you'll buy a little e cheap blow dryer or curling iron or flat iron when you're there. You can get those for relatively inexpensive. I was wondering, like, what if our U.S. Uh, charger for our phone or for our computer breaks? Yeah. Uh, what do we do in London? Well, if, if it breaks, it's internal in your motherboard kind of injury, and those are, uh, you want to take it to an IT place. Our staff can always recommend something like that for you. Um, it's Electronics, I used to see it happen in the beginning of laptops. Remember when laptops were dinosaurs and they weighed like 20 pounds? I used to see students with laptop injuries, injuries all the time, but electronics have gotten a lot better. Well, so I'm you don't see it as much um, anymore. Could we buy a like a British Mac charger for our American Mac, or is that just not? You can mobile? buy that, yeah, and you can also buy a, the the Apple has an international charger All right. oh, cool. Cool. that you can buy, and it's got several different ones. Okay. I know that I always travel with. Um, well, generally I go to Spain, but I have my country adapter, and then I have my multi one, which is a little bigger, and it's got like the European continent plugs, which is different than the British plug, but it's also got the British plug. So having one of those, which you can get on Amazon or you can get it at Walmart or Target, mm -hmm. those are nice because maybe you're gonna go to travel to France or Italy and that's different than this plug. So I generally have a British one and a universal one for all the different countries. And then I have two and I can plug in my laptop and my phone at the same time. Yes, so like that's probably necessary for me to get a laptop but a, a charger for my laptop than my Macs for... You want an adapter, right? We're talking about an adapter. Okay, adapter. Okay. Yes. I always have two adapters because I always want to plug in two things at the same time, right? Don't you always charge phone and computer at the same time? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, for anyone going on the Florence trip, it's a different plug. Right. So UK is type G, and I believe EU is type C. See, I didn't know the names of them. They're like 12 bucks for a three pack. Oh. Yeah, so I have one that has like all three in it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. One of those universals, which yeah. you can, you know, and that's an investment that, you know, you guys are just starting your travels, and that's going to be a lifelong thing now. <laughs> Um, I'd rather live in a shoebox but be able to travel than live in a palace and be stuck in it. So um, travel is going to be something that you're going to do. And I have a suitcase full of travel stuff that I take out for every single trip. So it's an investment. It's a good thing to have. Okay? Yes, sorry. Am I running? I'm sorry. London weather, I think we kind of touched on that between 40 and 70 degrees. You always need to be prepared for rain. It could be sunny in the morning. You could get on the tube. By the time you get on the tube, be a big cloud over your head. So you want to be prepared for rain at all times. Yes, sir. Do you recommend bringing an umbrella or just wearing waterproof clothing? I would say an umbrella. I hate waterproof clothing. It's hot. 
I, I, it's just me, but I'm menopausal. So. <laughs> How do you keep their feet from being like dry? Yeah. You know, like, boots, you could get waterproof boots and stuff like that, but you'd be surprised what they consider wet. I have a friend who's British who, when I, um, one of our staff members, Helen, whenever I pull, whenever I go, we walk somewhere together. I pull out my umbrella. She's like, "This is not rain. Put your umbrella away. You're an embarrassment." Um, <laughs> she, so they. Well, their, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Their uh, ability to, threshold. Tolerance. their threshold, tolerance, thank you, that's the word. Their tolerance for rain is much higher than ours, especially from Southern California, yeah. right? So um, I, I get it's a personal thing, but I'd rather have an umbrella than impermeable clothing that makes me hot. Yes? I'm much more humid than that. Dry. Yeah, yeah. Twice. At least, Double. yeah, at least like the East Coast, right? Have you ever been to the East Coast? Once I get there, my hair goes like that, and I just can't breathe. So you'll adjust to it. If you have allergies, make sure you have allergy medication because it's a good thing to have. It's a completely different climate, it's completely different things in the air. So, Okay. Sorry, John. Money, I know, I'm sorry. Um, money is, uh, that's the approximate uh, exchange rate, which is actually pretty good that's for really what good. it's been. Back in the day, it was like 160, 175, remember? Yeah. Not too long ago, yes. Seven months ago, it was already. Was it? Really, yeah. mm. oh, remember, exchange rates is a thing that changes every day, just like the stock market, right? It changes every single day. It's set by some person on a mountain surrounded by clouds and they um ch it changes every day so you have periods of time when it's good and period of time when it's bad um if you're going to take out cash and use cash which is something that we're going to talk about in a few minutes you know you can watch the exchange rate take out a little more when it's favorable are scottish bankers good in london no i oh wait scotland is scotland is the pound isn't it yeah, yeah. Scotland is not a different country, is it? Wait, yeah, it's, 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 I don't have Scottish Scotland experience. Is a country in the UK. They are so they're different. No, no, they're no, the same. God, I don't have any experience in Scotland. In it's very I would Google that. It's not an ancient state. It's it's a country like it's. So it's the British pound. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a national division. So so it should be. Like I'm thinking maybe Ireland. Ireland is different. That's the euro, though. Yes. I recently went to Scotland to visit family, and uh, for some reason we had to get their money from the bank. They have a Scottish pound because they like to be Scottish, like how everyone else is Scotland. So it's a Scottish pound, but you can use it anywhere. It's a pound. Okay. It's just going to say Scottish on it. All right. Uh, yeah, it's okay, easy. but you can use them in London. Yeah. That's like the euro is that way for sure. You can get French euros and use them in Italy or Spain for sure. That is, if you have euros, it doesn't matter what country is marked on it. And you'll even get, I mean, they're completely in circulation all over, so you don't have to worry about that. But just know that the exchange rate will fluctuate. Um, definitely, as far as money advice, make sure you tell your bank that you're traveling. You have to set a travel advisory. You can do this online through your online banking. Uh, the, my bank, Bank of America, has a 90-day limit. So if your trip is under 90 day, you can do it online. If your trip is over 90 days with Bank of America, you have to call somebody to talk to them. Okay. You also have to make sure that your bank knows which countries you'll be visiting. So um, you do have to set travel alerts, you know, include the different countries you'll be visiting. And you can alter that travel advisory. So if you suddenly decide you want to go to Poland, and uh, you had you have to remember to set the travel advisory for those specific days. Okay, it's very easy to do through your online portals through Bank America. It is, and I imagine they're all pretty much the same. Uh, you want to make sure that you have your debit card and you have a Plan B for accessing funds. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, whenever I travel, I make sure I have my debit card, which is something that I use as a credit card, right, to make purchases like I do here, but I'll also use it for cash when I need cash, which is I always have some cash on me. Uh, and then I have my credit card, which if I my debit card stopped working because 
there was a fraud alert on it or I lose it or it's stolen, then I have a way to get money too. So you want to make sure that you can access funds in case of emergency. Uh, make sure that your debit card is one of these systems, which is the Sears, the Plus, the Star, because that's what most of the European ATMs do. Make sure um, some of the European, they, make sure they have chips, both your credit card and your debit card doesn't have a chip. It is very highly likely that you cannot use it. All right. Uh, make sure that you have PIN numbers. I recommend having a four digit PIN number because some of the ATMs that I've seen in Europe will only have four spaces. And so five digit PIN numbers won't work. So if you have a five digit PIN, I recommend that you change it through your bank uh, for this trip. Visa and MasterCard are more widely accepted. Amex is accepted, but in less places they charge high vendor fees. So a lot of vendors won't take them. Not everybody will take um, credit cards always. So like I said, you always have to have some cash on you and they'll definitely, most places have minimums. So you can't go in and buy a pack of gum or a cup of coffee and use your debit or your um, credit card necessarily always. You may have to, if you, there may be a minimum purchase to pay electronically, just so you know. Um, traveler's checks are out of date, and I know your grandparents want you to go to the bank and buy traveler's checks. There's no such thing as traveler's checks anymore. Um, there are Visa traveler's cards, Visa travel cards, which are essentially work like debit cards. So if you don't have a credit card, you can get a Visa travel card, and you can use that to, uh, and your parents can upload funds if there's an emergency for that. Okay, that's a really good option. Uh, I'm sure MasterCard has that as well. And then uh, we do recommend that you travel with a small amount of cash, especially if you're doing your own travel, right? If you've done your own flight and not flying with the FS group flight, we definitely recommend that you have some cash on you. Uh, 100 to 150 pounds, that's generally our recommendation. I mean, even 50 pounds if you, you know, because you're not going to get a great rate here in the U.S. for pounds. So maybe 50 pounds. Just have some cash on you because you never know what happened. I, uh, a very, the daughter of a very dear friend of mine just went to Spain and there, actually as soon as she landed there was a taxi strike. And she had no way to get from the airport to her homestay. So it was big and complicated, but thank God she had cash on her because she ended up really needing it. So um, it's a, things happen. You know, when you travel you have to, you have to be easygoing and be able to, you know, go with the flow, but it is good to be prepared. Um, don't bring any cash in dollars to exchange because you can't do that anymore in banks. Yes, sir. Do you know if they have Uber out there? They do it by Yeah. 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 <laughs> Taxis are pretty. More, yeah. More expensive than Uber. yeah. Technically, I don't recommend Uber because it is unregulated, right? And so we don't consider it safe as a AIFS doesn't, so I can't really recommend it, but reality is different. Communication, definitely feed the beast, right? So I know you probably never pay some, you don't, you don't post on Facebook because it's just not cool, it's not legit. Um, but your parents are on Facebook, so it'd be nice for you to feed the beast and post some photos, some photos on Facebook. Literally when my son was abroad, that's the, literally the first thing I did when I woke up every morning at 5.30 a.m. Went on Facebook to look for that photo of my kid. Um, so please, you know, do something nice for your parents. Put some photos. Make them happy. If they're on Instagram, get on Insta because that's sort of legit. Not exactly. But they probably don't have what um, Snap. They probably don't have Snap. I don't have Snap. All right. Uh, sorry, but I'm trying, parents. I'm trying. Uh, email, Skype, FaceTime, Google Hangouts, Facebook Messenger. Those are great ways to communicate with people back home. Do you have WhatsApp? Yes. Parents, do you have WhatsApp? Download WhatsApp. Um, all of your contacts in there that have WhatsApp, it's a free and easy way to communicate with them. Your WhatsApp, they're actually the rest of the world outside the U.S. WhatsApp all the time, right? So that's 
a, uh, a way to communicate with one another as long as you have Wi-Fi. So your students will be moving from Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi a lot because roaming charges are expensive. Yes. So the emergency is also quite interesting. They'll also be able to WhatsApp them, um, but you cannot FaceTime an emer you cannot sorry Facebook an emergency. Because no, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm like the, the UK. Sorry. Those are the numbers, okay. and you can contact them through WhatsApp when you're there, okay. or call them, okay. right? But you can't. Facebook an emergency because nobody will see it. <laughs> you definitely have to. Or Instagram an emergency. You cannot do that. Okay. So you do have to kind of to make a, like a phone call, right? Even if it's through WhatsApp. Yes. I uh, just wanted to let everybody know I have T-Mobile and I talked to them. They said that for the amount of time that we're going, if you're staying in that kind of time, they your your data roaming is free. They're going to use. Um, so basically, you can use your phone just as if you're inside the United States. They said the only thing that if you're staying outside that period of time, because I gave them the exact dates, they said that we should be fine. But if you end up staying over that period of time, you're going to be using your data roaming for two or too many days. So then at that point, your service could get disconnected. But as long as you're there for the amount of time that we're there, you can use your cell phone exactly as if you're in the United States for free if you have the unlimited. Hold on. When you say using it, not phone calls, no. not phone calls, oh, yeah. not text messages. Text messages, yes. No, text, text, messages. Text, messages. text messages, yes. Sorry, sorry, but not phone calls. Phone no, calls are cheap though. It's like text five cents a minute or something. Is it that cheap? Yes. I think Google has a new service. Google. Google. And that also has free international data. Um, and yeah, I don't know if I would, I would be careful with those though, because if you stream a lot and you watch videos on your phone, um, I would try and do that when I was on Wi-Fi as much as possible rather than use my data because it's, not good. It's, too slow. it's slow, but also if you do get to a certain limit, they will, like she said, either start charging you crazy amounts or, um, so no, they won't. Okay. What's the number for a one? I think it's 112. They will give that to you when you get there. You'll get an emergency card. I think it's one, the rest of Europe, it's 112. Uh, they'll give you all that information when you get there. You're going to have a really thorough orientation meeting that will probably go over a lot of what we're going over already. All right? Any other questions about communication and things? Yes. Um, if you get a SIM card while you're there, will it work in our phones? It depends on if your phone is open or not. If your phone is open, you can buy a SIM card and pop it in, and you'll get a British number, and you'll be able to use that. You can buy um, a pay-as-you-go kind of plan. Uh, that's definitely an option. Uh, just check and see if your phone is open, and then just make sure you can use it again when you come back. I know AT&T, for example, if you open an AT&T phone, you, you don't, you're not able to use it again when you come back to the U.S. That's what I understand. But some company, I think Verizon might be, will let you. So just double check with your phone company. Any other? Mostly kids do like what she was saying with the T-Mobile. And then you really work from Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi, right? You have so much Wi-Fi, and there's Wi-Fi all over Europe, so mostly you do that, all right? And then you just have your phone ready to go. You'll turn, put, turn off the roaming and just turn it on if you ever have an emergency, so you can make an emergency phone call, okay? But as far as communication, you want to use Wi-Fi for sure. Um, as far as mail, as I said before, Dilk House is your contact address. Just be careful about sending care packages. Note that any, any packages that go into Europe uh, are considered importation. If you're allowed, your, and your allowance uh, for importation in Europe is like a $50 value. Uh, if you declare the value of the package over fifty dollars, and they're new clothes, they're new goods, or they're electronic goods, or they're cosmetics or makeup, uh, either they'll be rejected, or your student will be charged crazy importation fees, like hundreds of, of pounds. So you want to limit the value that you declare on the package, and make sure that you write used uh, and personal goods, uh, secondhand used goods. Otherwise, uh, cosmetics, I know you cannot send them into Europe. Medication cannot be sent through the mail. It will not. It will automatically be sent back. All right? I've had a, a mother send cosmetics and medicated soap, and no way. 
they sent the package back. Okay, food, things like that, you cannot send. So no cookies. Uh, as far as insurance, and this is our, so we're getting really close. You are all covered by the CISICC medical insurance package. It's a really good package, comprehensive, covers any incident, illness that happens to you while you're in uh, on the program. Even when you're on independent travel, it actually covers independent travel up to 30 days after the program. You just have to be traveling. You can't be back in the U.S. Uh, the coverage is up to $100,000 of coverage per incident. Uh, they are really good at covering all of your expenses. Make sure that anything that you pay out of pocket that you get a receipt for because you'll get reimbursed. Doctors, nursing fees, x-rays, medications. Anything that you uh, pay for, you will get reimbursed for. There is a one-time deductible per incident or per claim of $50. After that, everything else is covered. Our uh, team there, our staff there, has the forms that you filled out. It also was sent to you with your insurance card but or letter. Our, in, our team also has all the information. So if you're not sure how to fill those things out, but actually once they know you're going to the doctor, they make sure that you have all the forms and you fill it all out. They'll either send it in for you or help you send it in. Uh, make sure that you have personal effects insurance uh, for your phone, your laptop, stuff like that, because uh, someone is going to get robbed or have something lost, uh, pickpocketed. It happens. It happened to my kid the first, the second week he was there. He was in the discoteca with the whole group at Costa Rica. He was dancing. He was having a really good time. He's got some moves from what I understand. <laughs> and, but his moves are so good that somebody moved in on his pocket and lifted his new galaxy and it was gone. So luckily his mother works in the business and had personal effects insurance on it. It's like, I think it was $90 and it covered the phone. So we were able to replace it. The yes, personal sir. effects is different than the CISI? It's the same company, but it's a different fee. You have to pay separately, right? The medical insurance is included in your program fee. Okay. The, if you'd like to insure your belongings, it's an additional fee. I believe it's $95. Okay. I think it's worth it for the three months. And then if anything is lost or stolen, remember that you have insurance, okay? All right. Uh, our staff can help you with that. As far as travel, just very briefly, you have um, lots of travel opportunities while you're there. You know, London is a hub for travel. The Ryanair is based in London. EasyJet is based in London. There's lots of um, airports there. Our staff there can help you plan. You know, your first trip, you'll probably need a little help in the planning. Once you've done your first trip, then you're experts, and then you're even teaching our staff things that they probably didn't even know because things are so fluid and they change so much. So um, you can always ask our staff. And if you're, you know, in London for the weekend or the week and you want suggestions, definitely ask for uh, suggestions. As far as safety and security, you, I have two more slides. You have, um, you definitely have to do the step program. STEP is our safe travel enrollment program. It's run by the Department of State. You all must enroll in that. This is not an option. It's a homework assignment now. Um, it's something that you all have to do. You can literally Google STEP, have your passport on you, have your flight itinerary on you, and you have your housing accommodations on you, and you have to definitely log in all of that information with the government. If there were some an incident to happen, you want the government to know where you are, right? It's just one less thing that they, one less sort of step that they have to go through to get you help and know where you are. So definitely enroll in STEP. Any side trips that you take outside of London, you would definitely enroll and log in with, um, with the STEP as well. We also run our little mini STEP. So anytime you leave the city of London overnight, you have to let AIFS know where you're going. That's a rule. All right, every um, Thursday we'll have a very short meeting in your um, British Life and Culture class. One of our staff will come in and will remind you that you have to let us know where you're going for the weekend. You have to let us know your travel, you know, your flight, your bus, your train information. You have to know, we have to know your hostel information, contact information if you're going to visit a friend, that kind of thing. All right, if incidents happen, we have programs all across Europe. 
We're in uh, 25 countries worldwide, but most of them are in Europe. We have staff that are permanently based all over Europe. If you're in Berlin and there's an incident, we have staff there that can help you. But if we don't know you're there, we can't help you. <clears throat> all right? So it's very important that you let us know where you're going. Um, we don't ever say, no, you can't go there. You're all adults. You're over 18. But if you tell us, I'm going to Afghanistan for the weekend, we'd probably say no. <laughs> <laughs> right? Question. How far is uh, Ireland? Is it an hour or two hour flights? Uh, yeah, hour it's flights? Like, it's like an hour flight. Yeah. Just because while I'm doing the Ireland trip, I'm not doing the main trip. So I just wanted to know. It's called yeah. Minute, I think. In Minute, yeah. yeah. With AFS? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> nice to meet you. What school do you, are you interested? I have no idea what that means. No, where do you, where, what school do you go to? I'm not in school. Okay, excellent. Awesome. Uh, health and safety. Like I, two more, two more slides. I promise. Health and safety. Um, definitely, if if it's a bad idea here, it's a bad idea in London. All right, that's my mantra. That's what you have to drill that in your head. Is it a bad idea in, Cal in Southern California? Then it's a bad idea in London. All right. So you definitely live in a bubble, and everything is fairies and rainbows and unicorns. But that's not real life, right? You have to definitely be careful and watch out for yourself. So definitely don't travel alone at night, right? We don't want you traveling on the tube alone at night. We don't want you traveling alone at night. Use the buddy system. Even better, do the B3 system, right? Um, travel in small groups. Definitely don't accept drinks from strangers. We've all heard of the roofie thing. Uh, it's not something that occurs commonly but it has been known to occur. So definitely don't accept drinks from strangers. You go to the more uh, Latin countries like Italy, Spain, France, uh, when you accept drinks from strangers, it's kind of a contract of that you're gonna give something back, right? <laughs> so definitely don't accept drinks from strangers. Uh, don't take unmarked cabs. Again, we don't recommend Uber. Sorry. Uh, don't accept rides from strangers. You're putting your, you know, safety in someone else's hands. Uh, always make sure that your phone is charged, that it has credit, that you have a little cash. You can get yourself out of an emergency situation. The phone numbers for the emergency are there. You'll be given a little emergency card. You should program it into your phone. Parents, take it down. If you have an emergency, you need to get into contact with a staff member you can do that as well. This is not, what time does the bus leave for Cambridge <laughs> phone? That is not that phone, all right? This is, I have an emergency, I need help phone. I don't feel well, I need to see a doctor phone, okay? Makes sense? Uh, and then as far as discipline, and generally health and safety issues, things that you do that put yourself into danger lead to disciplinary action, all right? Uh, attendance is mandatory first to all class and all class events. So the events for British life and culture, you're expected to go show up, act like you're interested and participate. The, um, all students sign an agreement re and release form. So you've already ticked your box. It's like signing that contract with the devil. Remember <laughs> Ariel and, yeah. and uh, Little Mermaid? You uh, sign the agreement and you've agreed to act accordingly, right? So you're representing your, uni your college, your university. You are um, still subject to the rules uh, there. You're also a Citrus student now if you weren't before. So you're also subject to the rules here on campus. John, I don't know if you want to say anything more. Uh, yeah, sure. There's the Citrus College Student Code of Conduct. Um, you'll have to follow those rules. Um, so yeah, it's an extension of the campus. Um, so same with the, the homestay. And if there's an incident, then there is a procedure that involves the deans and the administration and could be removed from your classes and thus the programs. So that, this is why I stress finding a roommate, because uh, we have had roommates fight. And you know, if you're fighting on campus, you, know, you might get removed from your classes. So um, just keep that in mind that you, you're a student, um, you, the same rules apply, so yeah. uh, don't fight. I think in my experience, and I have um, 
a lot of years working directly with students, especially when I was in Spain for all that time. But alcohol is generally a factor in all of these. It's, it's always, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, one, if not, are both inebriated. And alcohol is something that because you're now at drinking age, you might not be 21 here, you are all 18, and that's the illegal drinking age there. It's something that then you sort of then go crazy because it's now easily accessible and relatively affordable. So you're drinking a lot more. It's putting your health at risk because that is an astringent that you're putting into your stomach. You're wiping out all the good bacteria in your stomach. It leads to a lot of stomach illnesses, a lot. Um, and then you are, it's a disciplinary thing because you're probably getting into more fights because in being already fast, right? When somebody pisses you off and you're loaded, you're going to let them know. You suddenly become the Donald Trump of the program. Um, people don't like it. The, um, and then it also leads to putting your health in. You know, I've seen girls come and drink too much at a pub, and their, the friends or the other girls on the trip or the guys on the trip will take care of them and make sure that they get home the first night. You know, put them to bed, make sure they're on the side, so if they vomit, they don't choke, that kind of thing. The second time she does it, one of the girls will take care of her and bring her home and roll her on her side, make sure she doesn't puke. The third night, everybody's like, I'm out. Yeah. You know, I'm not your babysitter. I'm done. And that's where she falls down drunk in the streets, breaks something, is picked up by the police, ends up half naked, date rape, that kind of thing. But... Alcohol is always generally a factor in it because the girl's drinking so much that she can't take care of herself. So please don't let that happen to you. If, that, if you are drinking where you're coming home drunk and you're making a mess all over the student apartment, all over the homestay, you'll be asked to leave. And then your housing is on you. And housing in London is not cheap. I mean, that is more than half the price of this program. So, you know, if you're asked to leave the housing, you don't get a refund. And, you know, disciplinary actions, it's just a nightmare. So be careful with how much you drink. Don't be that person, all right? Uh, we have a three, a generally a, a three-strike warning system. The first time after the first incident, depending on the severity of the act, what, exactly the details of what happened, you get a verbal warning. The second time you get a written warning. The third time you're out. You know, you're adults here. We're not going to deal with that kind of thing. Uh, illegal drug use, we will not tolerate it at all. And that means marijuana. It's legal here, but it is decriminalized, but illegal there. So we will not tolerate it on our program. Don't come to class smelling like it. Don't get on the bus smelling like it. All right? Don't, we'll, we're not going to tolerate it. Your home stays will not tolerate it. They'll ask you to leave. You'll be removed from the program. No refund, no credit. It's over. Um, your behavior is continuously monitored. You know, our staff is there with you every single day. They're on the, um, on the excursions, and we are in contact with the people who live in your building. So you people in the student apartments, we have people that are resident there that work with us. All right? So that's good for parents. You know your students are being watched.